So, hello and welcome to a new series of our uh, Dinis Guarda Cities Open Business Cities ABC Open Business Council series. And um, I welcome um, Eduardo Javier Munoz, um, which is joining us from Los Angeles, and uh, that I know for some time, and I am a huge fan of his work, and as well. Um, very excited to bring him to the series. So I'll start with some notes about uh, um, uh, Javier or Eduardo Javier Munoz. So I think um, he has a fantastic profile that goes for a lot of different things. As a native from Argentina, uh, would live 10 years in Brazil and works on projects in the United States since 2012, mostly based in California. Over the last uh, almost two decades, uh, uh, Eduardo has been working in international business, integration of complex uh, value chains, product development, import export, and as well uh, relating in business and technology in Brazil, Argentina, and the US, and in the world. And specifically in the last nine years, um, uh, Eduardo created an impressive career and, and company group that is the ARC Bravo Group, that is a sustainable mobility innovation company leading. Um, a huge amount of work and technology integrating the most important areas of our time. So from technology to sustainability, sustainable transportation, renewable energy, carbon footprint, and as well a lot of things integrated with the communications. And this is not just theory right now. Eduardo has been actually involved in a couple of smart cities from Brazil to Los Angeles and has been as well a thought leader that has been actually defining and working on this. And as its work is particularly impressive because not only is touching probably the most complex areas of our time and most critical, but as well it touches the areas of integrating these areas into blockchain, artificial intelligence, and as well self-driven vehicles. So all the, the big areas of our times, but very difficult. I think probably I would say that uh, is competing a lot of things with Elon Musk and I think we need to push his profile in a different way. But I think what I like as well is the sense of community that has been behind the project AppShare, that is the, the branch um, part of Arc Bravo group that has been precisely the biggest um, uh, visibility. And it's been working a lot in, in projects that have strategic alliance between private and governmental institutions to create solutions to complex problems. And especially in these areas, every problem is, is relevant more than anything especially with our times of COVID-19, this becomes even more important. And of course, one of the things that are particularly interesting and we're going to be talking is how to put these complex vehicles, these complex ecosystems all together, because this implies a huge capacity of architecture, a huge capacity of working with communities, and as well, a lot of persistence and uh, resilience, because it's not easy to put all of this together. So welcome to our series, Eduardo. I could go for a lot of things and I'm very excited about the work of FShare from the beginning that I met, that I wanted to do this for a long time, but now I think it's the right time. So welcome to our series. Well, th thank you very much for having me. And after everything you've said, I'm going to leave. <laughs> it was too, no, 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 that, this, is, this is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> now you're going to see how this works. <laughs> no, no, so, so I want to start... So um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Your, we, Basically, yeah. thank you for a very kind introduction. No, no, it's it's all deserved. And to be honest, it's, it's really impressive what you've been doing, and especially the complexity of all these different things. So I want to start with your background because I love culture. I love people from different countries and I love Argentina. I almost could be <coughs> Argentina, but I was born in Portugal, but my family was there uh, for the last 100 years. So uh, tell us a bit about that from starting in Argentina to then Brazil to then US, which are completely different economies, different countries, but actually all big countries with a lot of big capacity. And as well, how did you start all these adventures of entrepreneur and as well someone that likes to do a lot of different things? Well, yeah, it's, it's been a long journey, maybe longer than I, w I would like to, but uh, it, it's been, and I think that is, uh, you know, uh, the life of the entrepreneur is more uh, related to failures than success, generally. Uh, but all the, all the failures are the ones that prepare you to success. So uh, we, we take it that way. Um, for a start, um, I, I'm not going to talk much about myself, uh, not in, in, in terms of the organization, because we are very, you know, horizontal organization, starting by the founder 
uh, Miguel Angel Bravo, which is uh, one of the most prominent investors I know, uh, investors and inventors I know, um, uh, and uh, that you know yourself also. Uh, so uh, Miguel's, uh, I would say, most uh, uh, appreciated, uh, you know, legacy uh, is the type of organization we created, in which uh, we have contributions from all around the world, uh, people, you know, on, on the crowdsource side, uh, uh, creating uh, what the future should look like. Because we understand and we believe that uh, this is a very complex problem that we need all the help as possible. And uh, the only way of solving it is working all together with uh, being less selfish, I would say, you know, sharing more. Uh, so the name, the name EV share, which, which can be interpreted as electric vehicle share or electricity and vehicle share is much more than that. The word is share. So the, the share compound of the, of the name uh, is the most uh, important part uh, because it's what's uh, uh, showing us uh, what the philosophy that will take us uh, from the mess we are uh, is. So <laughs> um, having said that, um, uh, talking about me a little bit, um, so I, uh, uh, I study economy at the beginning and then I moved to uh, administration. Then I moved to finally my passion was uh, international business. Um, that already showed that I wasn't afraid of changes uh, because uh, you know when you change of careers that much, uh, you should be afraid of your uh, parents killing you because of the changes. <laughs> but but uh, it was it was uh, well. I I always uh, thought about uh, preparing myself to do something I like, so I don't look at like I was working but uh, enjoying it. Um, and well, and, and I found it. So uh, I, uh, the 17 years already that I do nothing in Argentina. Uh, it's a pity, it hurts a little bit uh, because it's a very nice country, but uh, has its own issues. And uh, it's the only country that I know that is uh, under uh, evolving <laughs> all the time for the last uh, maybe five decades. I mean, we, we came through maybe the last, 100 years ago, Argentina was one of, one of the richest countries in the world and now is one of the poorest countries in the world. So something we did wrong. And, and, but again, uh, being able to develop stuff and evolve in those type of uh, environments, it was makes you stronger and uh, being able to evolve good when you get to uh, the correct ecosystem. So I was 10 years in Brazil uh, working in the Amazon region um, with uh, sustainable projects. Uh, <clears throat> we were creating value from the rainforest non-wood uh, extraction uh, industries, uh, which is related to uh, fruits and uh, oils from those fruits. Um, so we were uh, a group in a group, a very small group that were responsible for the creation of what uh, is today very big, the acai, acai uh, market. Um, and uh, after working a couple of years in an organization that was uh, created to uh, uh, design and develop a uh, sustainable way of uh, uh, evolving the Amazon, uh, I mean, you can't tell the people there to not touch anything because they need to live, but you need to find a way to make money so they can live comfortably and not destroying the, the, the jungle. So it's... Uh, the rainforest. So it's like a, a, the balance. Uh, but when I was there, I was there for three years. And at a certain point, I was, you know, uh, realizing that it doesn't matter how much we put efforts there. The problem is in the cities, because the ones demanding the products that destroy the, the Amazon are the cities around the world. So at that time, I met uh, Miguel, uh, Miguel Angel Bravo, and uh, Rapidly, we uh, uh, started working together and uh, uh, we were talking back in time, it was 10 to 11, you know, very early in the game, uh, about uh, the need of uh, producing better batteries as a heart of uh, the decarbonized city, right? Um, so, well, I, uh, I got engaged into the project. I uh, invested uh, almost already 10 years of my life into it. Uh, and in the meantime, well, it was a very uh, um, interesting journey uh, because back in time we were like preaching in the bone, in, in the desert of dry bones, right? It was like t talking to people that were interested in hearing what we what we had to say. 
um, which is the opposite of what's happening now, which is uh, everybody wants to uh, do what we have been talking about. Um, very few are prepared. Well, that's a, a big journey. And uh, can you tell me before we go to, to the, your career and, and parts, so especially on the share and the last part that you've been doing, so how did you end up actually then going to U.S. and, uh, of course, you're based in, in Los Angeles and California as well, collaboration with the University of California. A bit of that background, because I think I'm interested to know. And I think this is interesting to understand. I think this, this, uh, this platform is about cities and people. And I'm very interested to understand these nuances, because I think people listen to us. Uh, entrepreneurs can always learn, but as well can engage and, and, uh, and see the nuances and the way things happen. Yeah, I mean, the ecosystem where you develop is a good part of, uh, of uh, your success or your failures. It doesn't depend on that because it's much on your resiliency. You were talking about resiliency in the introduction, and I, and I think that maybe the most important uh, characteristic of the organization that Miguel created and we are working in is uh, resiliency. I mean, uh, we are here and being able to uh, be close to a big success because we maintain ourselves alive. Right, because if you are not maintain, if you, if you don't maintain, you you will lose the opportunity, or you will never know if it, it was going to be a success or not. Uh, but in the case of uh, of California, it was like a natural thing. Uh, in 2012, uh, we were having already problems with uh, Argentinian government because of uh, lobby from corporations and not willing us to uh, exist because we were a problem. We were showing that they uh, were doing uh, things wrong. I guess. I guess. Um, so uh, at the time, uh, President Obama was calling entrepreneurs from all around the world to be in the U.S. and create value in the U.S. and welcoming uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, well, we heard the call uh, and we passed through the Select USA program in Washington, D.C. at the time. Uh, it was like a, an hour and a half uh, meeting in which I explained uh, what we, are, we were proposing to do. And they immediately told us, OK, welcome to the U.S. where, we, where you want to be. It was like for us was like crazy, right? Um, and uh, naturally, the first thing I said is California. I mean, there's no place that you want to be if you're in the green economy than California, because you have 22 years of uh, existing regulations and, and in improvements of those regulations uh, regarding, uh, you know, uh, decarbonization and, and, uh, and green economy. Um, so, well, we said California and uh, they said, they, they told me, okay, by the time you get to the air, to, to your uh, hotel, you will have an email uh, from us to uh, governor's office. Uh, and, I, and for me, coming from Latin America, imagine, I was like, okay, well, one day you'll send that email. Uh, but for my surprise, <laughs> by the time I got to the, air, to, to the hotel, uh, the email was there. And uh, a couple of hours later, I was already talking with somebody in the governor's office. Um, and less than a month later, we were in Sacramento meeting them. Uh, and we've been clients for the governor's office for business and economic development since then. Um, so I guess that, I mean, uh, that proves that uh, first, uh, states rule what going, what's going to happen in the, in the, in the ecosystems. Um, so that, that you know, speech that uh, the state does, doesn't need to influence anything, needs to be the free market. It doesn't happen that way. Because at the end, uh, states are the ones that are uh, creating the framework and the regulatory uh, system for things to happen. And if you don't have that, it's very difficult to evolve. Uh, and in California, we have that. So uh, we have the most advanced uh, driverless legislation we have the most advanced uh, environmental legislation. Um, you know, we have the cap and trade, so the penalties are going to a fund, and the fund funds technologies to decarbonize. Uh, it's it's really uh, uh, the correct environment. Uh, so after that, we were incubated by the University of California in Merced. So it was it was like a, the complete loop, and uh, and we've been uh, you know evolving in this ecosystem. It was like for us it was like uh, you know I always say it was like a coming from a very poor. Uh, place uh and uh and that somebody puts you in uh, i don't know in whole foods <laughs> it's like you know it's like a you you have access to the best of the best from all around the world and uh you know and in our case we were just uh, you know telling the governor's office who we wanted to talk with and they making the agenda it was really amazing and uh and it has been a, a, 
obviously uh, a more painful uh, uh, you know journey than we expected uh, but it has very enriching I would say uh, I mean uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, it makes us better uh, simply as that Wow, it's a great story and I think this as well people this the devil is really on details on these things and as well how one thing can change the entire life and open so much doors even of course that every door that you open you have to go through the journey and for the resilience part like you said especially if you are doing what you're doing so I want to go right now to the how did you create the organization um, Fshare and uh, all the different things because of course what you've been doing is really impressive um, and there as well the Arc Bravo so if you could explain the, the, the way the organization works because I think one of the things is sometimes the search engines only show one thing and if people search for you guys probably don't, don't pick off of the, the just the, probably the, the tip of the iceberg. So a bit of the organization, what you created, and I think for people that don't know about the Share and, and Dark Bravo. Sure, well, on the communication side, uh, uh, you know, this uh, is like the bamboo, you know, sometimes you need to grow seven meters underground before you show even a leaf uh, up. And uh, well, the time to show, maybe it's coming, so, but, but it's okay. Um, uh, on our side, uh, we started as a uh, you know, uh, uh, mobility company uh, and rapidly moved into the direction of other carbonization uh, companies. So we always talk about you know, uh, efficient electric batteries, uh, electric, uh, lithium batteries, for example. Uh, so we were able to uh, move as much people as possible and, and goods as possible with the least uh, quantity of energy and vehicles as possible. Because one of the big things that we, uh, we, com we combat, let's say, is, uh, or what we say is, it doesn't matter if we electrify 100% of the fleets, uh, we need to change the way we move. I mean, it's proven that uh, it's not viable anymore. So you have people losing an hour and a half one each way, uh, or two hours each way, uh, every day. Just imagine the, the, the loss in, uh, in money and in, uh, and in quality of life and in productivity that that means. Uh, and we can't afford that anymore. I mean, we can't afford being uh, so inefficient anymore uh, as a global society. Um, just, uh, there was, so there's a study that says that in Los Angeles, there are 17 billion lost because of traffic uh, with people living in Central Valley going to uh, the Bay Area to work. Uh, and uh, in Los Angeles area, the, the number is even worse, it's 27 billion. So I guess that only that is already a, a good business to, to get involved with, right? Um, uh, but um, going back to, to, the, to this tractor, so Art Bravo has been developing the future of mobility uh, and energy forever uh, since 2008. Uh, first in, in Argentina and then in the US since 2012. Um, so uh, we uh, invested uh, back, in, back in time. We, 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 we had our first uh, agri license agreement to manufacture lithium batteries in 2011. So that's how early we got into that game. You know, nobody, uh, now everybody wants to be linked to lithium battery. Well, it's a very hard environment to be in because the technology is controlled by very few hands. Uh, and generally nobody tells you the truth. That's, that's, that's the, uh, the, the battery environment. Um, so we invested back in time. We are part of a, of a, of a company uh, that in, in California, a technology company that created what we understand is going to be the lead technology in the new future, uh, which is a silicon composite anon material created by California lithium battery. Uh, and we recently created uh, also uh, with, the, uh, uh, with that similar team, uh, a company in Europe uh, related to battery materials. So our Bravo group uh, focus is to develop uh, mobility uh, the most efficient mobility, the concept we created is called uh, augmented efficiency, right? So what we say is we need lighter, we need uh, lighter vehicles, we need uh, uh, more energy density in batteries, uh, and we need to connect everything. So artificial intelligence and machine learning and uh, efficient systems can help us uh, reduce our footprint. Uh, but we also need blockchain to uh, bring uh, an augmented transparency to the ecosystem so the ecosystem can exist. Um, so describing that as uh, the hardware part is our Bravo Group is a for-profit corporation in California that uh, a headquartered in California that uh, develops the, the, the from the uh, manufacturing the, 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 the batteries to uh, uh, making the vehicles. 
uh, we have several partners in that. It's a very complex uh, industry. So uh, you have uh, partners on the, on the battery packs, on the motors, on the connectivity, uh, and on the composite. So it's, it's, it's a very complex world. Uh, and then in 2017, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we were so frustrated after Paris Agreement. I mean, everybody remembers about Paris Agreement, but nobody remembers how frustrated has been the time be from Paris Agreement to now, in which we, were, we did very little to accomplish our objectives or our promises. Uh, so in 2017, we created EVShare. Um, and if you share, uh, back in time, we need to take a decision. It was, uh, where are we going to stand for? Uh, it will, are we going to stand uh, for people, for the corporate world, or for the government? And we decided to stand on the side of people. So we uh, uh, ended creating a foundation in which we have a collaboration with uh, several other companies like uh, RSK on the blockchain side, uh, Space AI on the connectivity side, uh, Community Electricity on the creation of microgrids and, and energy systems. Um, so um, uh, we're, we are uh, um, integrating uh, masterminds in each part of the complex puzzle that you just explained. Uh, it's very complex to solve this problem, so we need as much help as possible. And uh, EBShare created a, uh, an ecosystem and also a financial system uh, that will lead uh, the way of creating community-owned assets uh, in communities uh, with the communities or in combination with uh, uh, worried corporations and uh, governments, depending on the location and depending on the type of infrastructure. For example, we're doing now some projects in Brazil related to taxis and buses. Uh, in other places, we're also working on uh, shaving peaks in the energy grid with energy storage. So it's, it's, uh, it depends. I, I, we also, we, we, you need to be very you know, flexible at this point. Uh, because uh, you need to attend the needs of the place. I mean, the, the, the cultural change is so big that you need to first supply what they are asking for and then explain them that to, for that to work, it's good to have a rest, the rest of the ecosystem done. But first, you know, just, just give them that, what they think they want. And that's uh, exactly what we're doing, uh, uh, going very strong into the decarbonization of cities uh, starting uh, in each location uh, accordingly to what the need uh, is uh, appearing to be, and then explaining how the rest of the ecosystem should uh, link to that. No, very, very impressive. So one thing that I would like to touch uh, is that the way you've been building uh, EV shares that you've been touching from the beginning, a blockchain token and creating actually a effective community and there actually was one of the first communities in the world that actually has been continuing because there's a lot of ICOs that just disappeared and a lot of tokens but you guys have been uh, building something very significant where the governance of the company the different partners that you have and all the different areas has been built effectively in blockchain from day one which is something that I think only the Chinese government managed to do uh, in a slightly different way let's put it that way well, but I that, think that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a difference of financial capacity between the Chinese government and us but uh, yeah <laughs> but, but I would uh, like to yeah, touch that <laughs> independent of the Chinese <laughs> yeah well one thing we one thing we learn uh, you know uh, in this relationship with uh, with the with the uh, uh, blockchain community I say I guess and we've been uh, there since uh, you know for already almost four years. Um, and uh, we were talking about blockchain even earlier, but uh, when we decided finally to apply it as a technology, uh, we created an organization with blockchain as a philosophy uh, in, the, in the terms of bringing transparency to a, an ecosystem that needed it, so that actually the ecosystem only is able to exist in that level of transparency. Uh, so the use of blockchain is philosophical and not uh, easy access to finance. So the problem we, we saw in the, in the uh, environment in blockchain is what uh, things were created to get money and not to uh, functionality. For us, it was like a philosophical decision and not a financial decision to use blockchain. Because if you go on the financial side, maybe we should have gone into a corporate you know, uh, thing and we uh, would have already been deploying and, and, and doing stuff. But we, uh, we took, you know, uh, long-term uh, philosophical decisions that we think are the correct ones. And, uh, and blockchain is uh, a, uh, a tool for us. I mean, it's not even the, the fundamentals. It's, it's the tool that, uh, that uh, allows us to make happen what we think should be done. And, uh, and that's the reason we're still alive. 
because if we uh, if we uh, created the project that just as uh, just because we want to be funded uh, by crypto environment or crypto world uh, we most probably have been disappear right now by now uh, like uh, almost most of the projects that were uh, funded at the time uh, are already not existing anymore yeah it's it's a very interesting thing and can you just still elaborate a bit for people that don't i'm well most of people don't understand much about blockchain but uh, uh, we have some people that understand in our audience but i would like to understand or not understand but just for you to explain the way you put together the governance i, I think uh, it's an interesting example that I think more companies could follow. But I think it's quite interesting because as your community grows and hopefully a lot of the vision that you guys have been putting together, like you mentioned, the roots, it goes a big tree or a forest. A lot of things can actually happen out of that. But I would like to touch that because very few people are focused on this kind of ecosystem and governance around creating a community that is effectively actually the vision of blockchain from day one, but very few people did it. Yeah, well, so, uh, so on the blockchain side, uh, there are uh, a couple of pillars, I would say, uh, in the, of the technology as, uh, you know, as a pillar of what we're doing. And uh, one is on the financial side. I mean, you, you need to, uh, I mean, what we saw was a lot of disruption and lack of connectivity between some worlds. So we had like uh, big uh, climate change funds and, and big uh, ESG funds uh, that uh, were created to a purpose. Uh, but no link from that to actual projects happening. And uh, at the end, what is needed to be created is a link between people and the money, <laughs> right? Because when you, for example, finance a public or semi-public transportation system or a community solar or a community energy storage system, uh, what the fund is financing is people, which is the one that is using the service. So, well, the, the, the thing was, well, how we create the infrastructure so this can happen. And this is what we started to, 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 to create. And it took us a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of trouble, as you, can, as you know. Uh, because as, as, as this is too, uh, everything is new, uh, you need to navigate through regulations and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, creating systems that didn't exist and need to match with things that already exist. So uh, at this point, we, uh, on the financial side, what we do is, uh, we tokenize uh, trusts that maintain the property of the assets. Uh, the foundation puts them to work and integrate it into the ecosystem. Uh, everything, every payment and every uh, action uh, in the ecosystem is digitalized and written, certified and validated on, on blockchain, which is the most difficult thing to, to do in the ecosystem. Um, uh, so at, intra at each transaction, smart contracts directs money to pay for the infrastructure. So it's a very secure way of financing people because at the end, if people is using the service, the money goes directly to the, to the funding party. Um, and uh, we give access even to, as, as a augmented transparency through a, a partnership with a, a company called Paybook. Um, uh, we give that reading access to the uh, check account at the bank uh, to every stakeholder of the ecosystem. So everybody knows where the money is, where it's going, uh, you know, and uh, I'm being sure that there's no uh, uh, misutilization uh, uh, of, uh, of the funds. So that's one part. So how you grant uh, the funds that the money is used in the correct, uh, you know, uh, 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 the correct project or, or, or the correct assets on the correct service as, as promised. Uh, and uh, knowing that they, uh, they have uh, a security of uh, being paid back. So that's one part of the ecosystem. On the other side, uh, you need to create incentives uh, for the uh, uh, stakeholders in the ecosystem uh, to not only use it, but also create value for it. So there you have drivers, you have uh, energy, uh, uh, not only users, but also energy uh, producers, right? It's the concept of pr prosumer. Now you have, now, now you have uh, things are changing very fast. So people have now solar panels in their house and generally they are generating energy when they are not, uh, consuming it, so or they store it, or they need to sell it. So those type of things that they also bring, obviously, uh, regulatory uh, changes that are happening uh, right now all around the world. Um, but uh, in that in that end, uh, for example, now in the mobility side, which is what our first approach, and the energy in some locations, uh, what you need to know there is exactly who produced what, who bought it, uh, at what time, and uh, and much you know uh, demand and offer. 
in a way that there's no double uh, transactions of, of, of those assets or, or those things. And the only way of doing that is uh, using blockchain as a, you know, uh, you know, registration, certification, and validation of all those transactions. And um, uh, we did uh, a very good experience of that back in 2018, uh, already almost, well, it's in, at the end of this year will be three years. Uh, so we're not saying that we're going to do something we never did, it's something we already did two years ago. No, impressive. So, so I want to touch right now, you touched some of the things, but I want to go a bit more in detail. So, of course, uh, uh, well, if Sherry is quite a, a big enterprise and as well, very ambitious forest, if you use a metaphor of a forest where we have different trees, each of them specialize in different things. And because this is about carbon footprint, a lot of these things, it makes completely sense. So in terms of uh, the main areas, so you're talking about areas like uh, Emission, a zero emission micro transit service for these events with communities, airports, resorts, campuses, and, and more areas, uh, sustainable vehicles, sustainability, and a lot of different things. So can you tell us a bit about the areas and some of the products that you've been in specific that you've been building? You touched some of these things, but concrete things. Yeah, uh, first uh, I would like to say that uh, one of the important things of the platform is the generation of uh, uh, blockchain-based carbon credits, you know, and, uh, and created upon this, you know, uh, generation uh, registration certification and validation of those carbon credits, giving a high transparency to the carbon credit market, what it doesn't have today. Um, so when, as you are able to measure, uh, you, can all, all, you can generate and you can also improve and certify that that piece of carbon credit has been sold only once and you have all the, the chain of the, you know, the changes uh, on the, on the uh, ownership chain uh, of those carbon credits so they are not used twice or whatever happens uh, or happened in the past in, in this uh, segment. Um, so having said that, um, uh, I, well, let's say, let's get into the, into the more specific <laughs> projects, let's say. Uh, so we, we have now a very important project in the north of Brazil uh, with uh, 1,100 uh, taxis that will be uh, you no know, electrified, let's say. Um, but in order to do that, you need to create a, like a, a more revenue uh, trends uh, for the ecosystem, uh, so they are able to pay for electric vehicles that are expensive, right? And uh, in Latin America, you have no subsidies or, or nothing that uh, you know uh, support you with uh, the buying of electric vehicles. So uh, we created a, a system in which uh, we uh, uh, put down costs by uh, negotiating with. Uh, big vendors of the, of the ecosystem um, and reducing the cost of the taxi driver. Uh, like for example, uh, uh, phone uh, communication uh, fees, uh, health insurance, insurance of the vehicle. Uh, we uh, negotiate uh, advertising for the whole system uh, as a whole. Um, uh, we generate uh, revenue from delivering packages, from moving people. Uh, and everything, uh, and we uh, and we created a very uh, bold uh, safe security system uh, with a with a, a company created in Brazil. Uh, this is really important for Latin America and other markets. Uh, so uh, it's a project that has. Uh, I mean, we I made uh, hundreds of presentations of that project, and uh, I never uh, received a uh, bad uh, or negative uh, response to it, because at the end we are doing uh, decarbonization in the Amazon region. Um, uh, and proving that uh, we can electrify mobility in urban environments, especially in the semi-public and public transportation now and not in 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Um, so what we have been told is that this is something that will happen in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, mainly because big corporations of the industry are not prepared for this. And, uh, and they try to push the, you know, the, the milestone uh, for years ahead so they have time to prepare. The truth is we don't have time. Uh, so we need to reduce uh, temperature in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, of the environment or we will start suffering and many people will die. Uh, and, uh, and we are also breathing uh, an air that kills us every day. So, because that's another thing. I mean, it's like the climate change discussion. Well, uh, climate change doesn't exist. Okay, let's put climate change out of the equation. Uh, let's talk about the air we breathe. The air we breathe kills 8 million people every year. So I guess we need to change that, right? <laughs> and, uh, as, and as we were discussing earlier, uh, the good thing about the pandemic is that uh, for us being in lockdown, 
uh, we saw that the skies were blue. And that the reason we were, weren't able to see it uh, is because of the uh, vehicles we use and the way we move. Um, so uh, that's on the taxi side. There are other projects now also in the, on the bus side in which uh, we're proving that uh, it, it is this possible that cities uh, can run uh, their bus services without cons making concessions or to private companies of that. Uh, by uh, creating PPPs, uh, private partner, uh, uh, public partnerships uh, between the foundation and the, the city, uh, controlling from the solar generation to the ticket selling. Everything, uh, again, uh, created with the pillars of augmented transparency, augmented efficiency. Um, and, uh, and then just to mention another project we are involved with, uh, the whole world has a big issue with uh, energy distribution. So the infrastructure we have is already old and not uh, updated enough. We are starting to have blackouts all, our, all across the world uh, and because of that. Uh, and the, uh, we see that the only way of solving this is generating, uh, we call it distributed energy resources. So uh, generating in a distributed way and having batteries to support uh, the renewable energy generation to maintain a stable uh, supply of, of energy. Uh, so that's the, that's the, uh, the only way of uh, taking out pressure on the transmission lines and the distribution infrastructure. So well, that's really uh, amazing what you guys have been doing and especially the complexity of things that you are touching, governance, uh, institutions, yeah. private... <laughs> pri uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, I, yeah. You made a question about the governance. So the governance is also an important stuff. Uh, and the way we create it is that we have a uh, direct uh, vote uh, with uh, uh, qualified uh, votes also, according to the type of stakeholder you are. Uh, and, uh, and, we, and we left, we leave the, uh, the responsibility of taking certain decisions, especially in the user experience side and, uh, and the uh, structure of the service uh, to the community. Um, and this is not something that you write on stone. That's something that you can, uh, as you can vote from a click on the phone, which is the revolution of this technology is this. We can take a decision today with the phone and we can realize that we were wrong in a week <laughs> and we can vote again, right? You don't need to make a, you know, like a, a, fine, a, a, a poll uh, location organization spend up hundreds of millions of dollars to, to have a, a, something vote, voted and uh, and being able to change stuff we can change within days if we realize that we were wrong uh, so uh, i guess that uh, the challenges in that obviously is uh, education and providing information so people can take smart decisions and correct decisions uh, so there's there's the balance uh, i mean uh, you need to uh, people doesn't like or want to change generally what the environment is but if is it easy to do they do they, they, they people do the correct thing when it's easy if it is hard to, to do the correct thing, they simply continue doing it, what they're doing. So our work uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, EVShare is to make, it the, to, to make them as, easy as, as easier as possible uh, to take the correct decision on the environmental side. Well, really impressive. So, so moving forward, so one of the things that I'm particularly interested, so um, you, you touched that, but you didn't go too much in detail. So, you have two big case studies, mostly that you've been working. One thing is Minas Gerais, which you touched the, the taxis and a lot of different things, but could you tell us a bit more in overview? And then of course, Los Angeles as well, because as you mentioned, you're working a lot of concrete things uh, on these areas. Yeah, well, let's start for Los Angeles. So in Los Angeles, uh, this is a big project uh, which is uh, led by uh, the Energy Coalition, a very important organization for the energy efficiency and the decarbonization of California one of the most bold organizations and more committed organizations I know uh, on this purpose, uh, especially in the name of his chairman, of their chairman, uh, Craig Perkins, a very uh, enthusiastic and uh, acknowledgeable guy and uh, that I, I like him a lot <laughs> uh, because of the efforts they've been doing and what they've been doing for the last over 40 years. Um, and uh, there's a group of companies behind them uh, creating the first advanced energy community with a uh, CEC uh, $10 million uh, subsidy. Uh, and, then, and now that will grow for other two communities. 
Uh, and that is mainly uh, related to what we have been talking about in the great extent of it, which is connecting solar roofs with uh, en home energy storage systems, with EV chargers, with community solar and uh, community <laughs> energy storage systems, and connecting all that in the same uh, protocol of communications and blockchain systems. So uh, that's something that is happening and obviously uh, will uh, lead the way and show the world how to do it. Uh, and we are part of that on the mobility side, uh, and uh, we are very proud of, of being select of, uh, for being selected to do that. Um, um, related to Brazil, and you're talking about in Belo Horizonte, is more on the Arc Bravo Group side, so Bravo Motor Company. Uh, Bravo Motor Company is leading uh, a cluster that will manufacture batteries and vehicles. That's Bravo Motor Company's core. Uh, and uh, uh, we are bringing some suppliers also uh, from uh, California, Utah, and other locations uh, uh, to be uh, there with us. Uh, Belo Horizonte and uh, Minas Gerais State uh, especially uh, are uh, the most impressive uh, state, a modern state and, uh, at, uh, and the uh, investment attraction uh, ecosystem I've seen for years. Uh, the new governor, well, he's in the office for two years already, has proven that he, is, uh, he has created an uh, in, in impressive team. Uh, and, uh, and they are uh, really making the difference. And I think that Minas Gerais will lead uh, this process in the, in the whole region, Latin America. Um, so uh, right now, the only uh, lithium battery uh, project in the whole Latin America is ours, there in Minas Gerais. Um, and we will uh, produce there uh, the most modern uh, lithium batteries uh, available um, to back up uh, this reality that I was describing. So uh, same at public and public transportation and uh, distributed energy resources through energy storage uh, support. Um, so it's a very impressive uh, project. Uh, the 75 hectares, it's like 125 acres, I think. <laughs> something like that, uh, 225 acres um, uh, uh, of, of land inside uh, the International Airport of Belo Horizonte. Uh, and uh, uh, it's going to be the most modern uh, cluster on this side of the industry uh, in the region for sure and one of the most modern in the world. Oh, uh, congratulations, first of all, because I know how difficult it is to do something, especially between public, private, and especially in Brazil, which is a very fantastic, but very complex country. Um, so I want to go uh, right now. And of course, I know that there's a lot of other case studies and people can look at the Eve share because you guys have been working in electricity. You mentioned about the, the lithium batteries you have uh, as well with the uh, work with Bravo Motor Company and autonomous electric vehicles and manufacturing. Then you have as well Space AI and as well different things. Can you just give a bit of overview, especially on the... Uh, Bravo Motor Company, and as well on the Space AI. I'm particularly interested on these two areas that I think you, you touched, I think, all the others, but I think these two, these two are interesting as well. Yeah, well, on the Bravo Motor Company side, as, as I just explained, is uh, manufacturing uh, next-gen batteries uh, and uh, creating uh, what we call the augmented efficiency uh, systems uh, for mobility. Uh, so the, the objective there is to reduce weight through composite, uh, um, to uh, create uh, a good user experience vehicle for semi-public and public transportation. So taxi service is something that is given all around the world, but there's no taxi vehicle, <laughs> not an efficient one. And the only taxi vehicle I know is the London one. Uh, which has uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, more than a century of, of, this, of the same design. Um, so uh, uh, we, uh, we've been working into that very heavily uh, on the van, uh, on the taxi, the van on the bus side. Uh, the, the buses is the same thing. We haven't changed the bus designs or technology uh, forever. Uh, we just electrified some, but we're still using the same buses that we uh, designed in the 50s. Um, so, so as you uh, speak, uh, continue, Eduardo, but I will just want to share the screen because I think it's cool to show this because it's really cutting yeah. edge what you guys have been doing. For people listening to us, I think it's, it's really worth to look yeah, at so this. Well, well, that, yeah. that, uh, that, well, that's, that's the van. Uh, 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 in, the, in the research we did, as, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the uh, research that was done in the past decade 
uh, were telling us that the last mile, that one is a good one. <laughs> uh, that, that slide is a good one to explain what we're proposing. So um, uh, the thing is, uh, we've been uh, trying to tackle uh, our problem in mobility uh, on false uh, statements, right? We've been talking about the last mile problem for over a decade. Uh, and uh, the problem is not the last mile, the problem is the first 20. <laughs> so that's what we found out. And, uh, and at the beginning, we were working uh, through the first, uh, you know, uh, uh, using studies that were already done, uh, thinking that the problem was uh, the last mile and, uh, you know, developing a two-seater. I, mean, I mean, if you see that in our you know, website, you see the, the, the previous vehicles that we developed. And suddenly we realized that we that wasn't the solution because the problem was that ex the cities were getting expensier and people going to live in satellite cities and then the infrastructure to move all those people didn't exist so now they have their own car and they all came to the big city in their own car and create this traffic that is a mess uh, so what we needed to do is uh, not convincing people that already use public transportation to jump into new systems but convincing people that use their own car to get into public transportation or a public transportation that is suitable to their to their uh, to their needs. So to do that, you needed to create new vehicles, comfortable, convenient systems of, of service. Uh, it was a new, totally new system that needs to be created, and that's what we work in. Uh, you know, creating this uh, new uh, integrated uh, platform of vehicles that will move these people that have they, that use their private car uh, from Monday to Friday during work time. Uh, so what, we, uh, what we're proposing is uh, creating these new vehicles that will convince this customer to stop using their own car to jump into a semi-public transportation with a high quality and high convenience. Yeah, it's really, and it's impressive as well because there's a huge amount of engineering, architecture, and as well capacity to put this in practice. So again, congratulations for this. And I'm a huge fan of what you guys have been doing on this. So I want to go to an area that uh, it's, it's actually probably the most uh, important area. And you touched a bit, but we didn't go deep on that. So you've been working in everything you've been doing is working about uh, uh, reducing carbon footprint and zero emissions. And this is an area that, of course, now Biden, new administration is coming back to this. But the previous 40 years were kind of... a. <laughs> Thanks Very God challenging. Let's put it that It was it was a, a, a very hard four years here. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I mean, uh, all uh, over the world because they create this created a huge amount of uh, fake news, uh, fake stats, uh, fake whatever, which is still going. But I think hopefully at least the language will be more focused in solving problems. So could you just elaborate on on the work you've been doing, carbon footprint and zero emissions, but as well some of the solutions you touch a bit on on a, on Brazil but as well some concrete things and as well in Los Angeles, because of course this is a big, big thing that touches and independent of anyone might think about it, of course there's a big problem <laughs> and uh, Antarctica is disappearing. So I think people might have a lot of things, but there's a lot of uh, prophets of doom and other people saying that let, no, no worries, just continue going. But I would like to hear a bit of your overview, both from- a, Yeah, I will, I will yeah. speak a little more on Brazil. And uh, in the previous question, I realized that I, didn't, I ended not speaking about space AI, which is one of our uh, biggest yeah. parts. So, so go for, uh, first for space AI and let's go then to carbon footprint, because I think it's- Yeah, so well, uh, space AI uh, has a founder, a very good friend of mine, uh, who, who I really love, is uh, Diego Favarolo, one of the brightest minds. Uh, that I know, and uh, uh, and they've been creating uh, what we uh, all. I mean, you you've been hearing about Internet of Things for a while, right? Um, and uh, in the industry, we believe that Internet of Things is not going to be Internet. It's going to be another network that will connect, you know, uh, uh, things, uh, mainly uh, driverless vehicles, uh, uh, coffee machines. I mean, things, uh, all, the, all the things we, uh, we are related to. And uh, for doing that, you need to create an independent, more safer uh, network. Um, and uh, what uh, uh, Space AI has been doing is creating uh, a hardware and a protocol uh, to help uh, create this infrastructure in a very impressive way, uh, low cost, open source. Uh, and, uh, and we've been working together for over uh, six years. Uh, uh, so we're uh, totally convinced of uh, using this technology. So the, 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 uh, just put it, to put it in context is just uh, one of these communication nodes goes in every asset. 
that gives the asset uh, an ID. Uh, uh, being a, uh, for us in the ecosystem, every asset uh, and every person is an ID of the ecosystem, and they can transact within each other uh, autonomously, right? Um, so this is something we can do because we can we have uh, uh, processing capacity uh, on the nodes. So we have 256 cores computers that we can use uh, to process our own uh, transactions. Uh, and also a communication network because every node can connect to each other in an independent uh, network with uh, the same protocol. Uh, on top of that, you, you, you have different platforms that run and that uh, controls each part of the ecosystem. Um, so um, basically uh, that, that infrastructure that is also linked to uh, a foundation called Open Space Network uh, will bring a lot. I, can't, I won't talk much about that because Diego will kill me, so I will let him <laughs> communicate what he needs to communicate. But I, I know it's really soon. We, we will hear a lot of things from uh, Space AI uh, in the next couple of months. No, no, so interesting. Might be a, an interesting interview. So let's go right now to carbon footprints and zero emissions. Yeah, I think it's an area on, the, on, the, on, the carbon, on the carbon footprint, uh, basically it's uh, very easy to, to explain uh, and very difficult to deploy. <laughs> so it's, it's a, that's the tricky part. So uh, when you see, uh, uh, when you always talk about something, you need to see or why did it fail up to now, right? So the carbon credit market has failed because of the lack of trust. So what you need to create is, uh, you know, a high level of trust. So you can actually, you know, bring this market from where it was to where it needs to be. Obviously, in parallel, what's going on is that uh, December list this year, the Paris Agreement will be binding to all the nations that sign it. And they will need to start, you know, uh, uh, doing what they said they were going to do or they will start paying penalties. That means that carbon credits will increase in value. So now we have the economical incentive to make it right, right? Um, so with the network we just described and the uh, ecosystem we're describing, so uh, we're going to start having satellites that will connect to all these assets. So you will have satellite, uh, constellations of satellites in space and constellations of satellites in the ground that will connect to each other, creating like a distributed uh, brain computer uh, or neuronal computer uh, that will be able to connect and to process information and to, you know, register, certify and validate uh, this transaction in a decentralized way. And that's very powerful. I mean, when you, uh, and as I'm telling you, I mean, we will be able to create carbon credits with certified information live mode uh, and uh, creating a, a uh, you know, or having a uh, a market, and everybody creating its own car, so its own carbon credits uh, will be sharing part with the community uh, and and for him for himself, um, and that's a very impressive thing. Uh, we are very excited about that because uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, people riding on the taxis, for example, in the Brazil project. Uh, we will be generating uh, carbon credits that will dis be distributed with, with the driver that will help him pay the vehicle, uh, will incentivize the use of the, of the service because people will be making money off because of traveling in that system. Uh, and the foundation will get funds to continue to grow. Uh, and this will be just by, uh, you know, making the effort of making, of generating, uh, you know, very transparent uh, live mode uh, blockchain based carbon credits. Well, impressive. And, and I think it's really something that can actually be taken to a lot of other countries because I think one of the challenges right now is how to get this right and actually how to get out of all these myths and start getting concrete solutions that are key. So another thing I want to touch um, is so most of the work you're doing and all the, the companies and as well the community around your companies is around the concept and landscape um, of the vision of smart cities. So can you elaborate on this? Because you've been working on this for a decade now. And I think, of course, smart city, there's still a lot of mysticism around what is a smart city. Um, even the concept is still very uh, complex for most of people. And as well, you cannot sometimes put everything in the same box, but it's interesting. So I would like to hear your the way you see smart cities and as well the, the different ways you've been working on this concept and all the solutions. Yeah, well, the, the smart city concept is like, uh, you know, <laughs> something that has been very used, uh, but no definitions or very clear definition at least. 
at the beginning, a smart city was the one that had a, uh, you know, uh, uh, red, uh, uh, yellow and green lights coordinated. It was, that was like the whole definition of smart city. It was how uh, the flow of, uh, you know, stops were developed. Uh, and um, also uh, how we, uh, you know, um, uh, put on or off uh, lighting, for example, uh, when needed. Uh, the concept of smart city for us uh, or for the world right now is much comp more complex than that. Um, uh, what we say for starters, uh, we can't call smart city a city that kills uh, its inhabitants, right? <laughs> so I guess that uh, if we are going to design a smart city, the first thing we need to design is a new way of moving that doesn't kill us. Uh, in terms of the security in, the, in traffic uh, and uh, the air we breathe. Um, so uh, that's an important thing. The other thing is uh, take care of uh, being efficient in the use of energy. Our energy, our, our energy system right now is very inefficient. So you're talking about at least losing 50% of the energy that is generated in the source uh, until we use it. And when you make more fine tuning on the research, you might be talking about losing 70 to 75% of the energy because they, yeah, the, the distribution lines, the transmission lines and the buildings are very inefficient uh, because we're still building them for us. We have been doing that for over a hundred years. Um, so I guess that a smart city is a city that um, uh, uses the energy more efficiently. Uh, that has uh, a system of mobility that allows you to move without losing time and, and productivity or uh, creating stress. Uh, a place where you're able to breathe without killing yourself uh, and, uh, and a place where, uh, you know, uh, the general carbon footprint is uh, the lowest as possible. That would be like the, the smart city concept uh, in, our, in our minds. Well, I, I like you You're very synthetic, but it's a very powerful one. So um, moving forward. So one of the things that I want to touch as well. So uh, and this is coming at from your website, so I'll try to read it. So, the F share platform integrates participants, vehicles, charging stations, energy producers, riders, and community via a secure blockchain based systems comprised of series of dApps, Web3 distributed apps, and a public API which allows if share and third party developers to produce the apps at full custom enterprise solutions on top of if share platform. So, of course, this is the vision of an entire smart city. Um, and it's the vision as well of uh, an integrated human machine and all the systems that are together. So can you explain this? And I know that you are actually doing this both in Brazil and LA, but as well, um, how you are putting this together and, uh, and as well the architecture as well to make sure that like you, you touch partly, let's say the public, private and technology players on this. Yeah, well, the, th the thing is, as, as we have been, have been talking in the whole interview, uh, it's a very complex uh, ecosystem. So you need just to create the, the bone part and then uh, let the flesh grow around it, I would say. Um, so what we do is create the infrastructure and then uh, new apps will be created uh, for spe specific stuff that we are not even seeing right now, or, or maybe things that we are not uh, you know, focused right now, like water systems. For, uh, that we are not considering at this point, but in, in the time that is existing, it's just plugging that into the ecosystem, uh, as well as uh, prosumer uh, regulation. So there are, places, there are places that you aren't able to sell your energy. I mean, you can't. You can't even inject it back to the, to the grid in, some, in many of the locations in the world because of the regulation and because of the monopoles that were created by governments. Uh, so, uh, you, you start working where you can, and then uh, the rest of the ecosystem will start to plug to that uh, because it was created to do like that. Um, so uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty much the, the logic of the organization is around that, is uh, creating an ecosystem and letting others to uh, join the ecosystem as soon as they are prepared to. Um, so, because there are many sectors that can't, they, 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 their regulations in their locations don't allow them to do that. So, and, and again, I mean, we don't know uh, where, I mean, we're in the beginning of this, right? It's like, uh, you know, we have a, 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 a computer and we have an operating system on it. And now we create, we need to create the apps. In our case, we create the platform 
and uh, and the apps will continue to add. I mean, we are already discussing about DeFi compound of this, so how to create uh, the ability of uh, financing those that don't have access to finance. We're already doing that in the case of the drivers, uh, linking uh, you know people that need to service uh, and have the money and don't want to own the fleets uh, through the foundation uh, to allow the driver to work and uh, pay for the vehicle uh, with their work, uh, if that makes sense. And I think that in a certain moment, we will all understand that this uh, vehicle, center is tourism, all these assets will need to be community owned and owned by nobody specifically. But at this point, you know, uh, in the psychology, uh, uh, social psychology, I would say, uh, the sense of ownership is still very strong. Uh, and, uh, and we allow them to, to, to go, I mean, until they realize that there's no value in owning it. But it, that's, that's part of the, of the philosophical part of it. Uh, so in, ter in terms of uh, general understanding of what your question is, uh, we are creating, uh, you know, uh, the, the platform and the app and the dApps that we control and we are experts in, but we open the opportunity to others to connect and create apps where we're not special, specialized. I mean, we are, uh, we are a community uh, platform. So whoever wants to join the ecosystem is, well, is welcome. Um, Fantastic. And in terms and of... As well, uh, the vision of blockchain and, and DeFi. Of course, the exactly. point is so to in terms of this in, that we in terms of uh, in terms of information, what's an important thing? So uh, you talk about API. So we have we are creating an API that will allow anybody to uh, surf or uh, uh, get into the data that we will create, and uh, and they will uh, pay for that data, and everybody will decide which type of data they want to share, right? Uh, the thing is that we believe that those, that information is a community information or it's, or it's for the community. So if somebody wants to pay for it, it's not for the organization, it's for the community. So whatever information is uh, uh, taken from the community, uh, obviously uh, under consent, uh, is going to be uh, community distributed accordingly to what the uh, community agrees to. Amazing. So another thing I want to touch, and I think picking in this area, and this, uh, I think we're passing close to an hour and a half, so I'll go for the last questions. So I want to touch, so as you know better than anyone else, as we increase all these areas from Internet of Things and all the sensors, uh, the smart city technologies that, that connects all the city, the smart vehicles, the smart buildings, uh, of course, there's a lot of things that happen around this, that is the privacy and the governance of this data, and as well, who owns and who manages this data. Of course, the way you put it is through governance, but it, as we know, we are right now in a very schizophrenic approach between centralized systems, decentralized systems, or even just chaotic systems. I think it's probably more the word is chaotic system, because most of the technology doesn't speak with each other. And for instance, uh, here in the platform, Cities ABC, one of the things I found out was if you look at the one very basic metric, if you look at the population of every city in the world, you don't have a consensus. Even the biggest ones, you, you go to Wikipedia, you have one number, you go to another one, you have another one. So we have a huge, this, and in some cases it's actually schizophrenic. We have millions of, of people difference and the, we, we have a lot of concepts. So, but I'm more interested in the privacy on data. And I know that you have been building with that in the ecosystem. But is there anything so as well, of course, if you go to a bigger scale, what is happening in China, there's this already social score, all these things that come out of this, um, if there's not this governance. So I would like to touch this and see how do you see this as well for your work. Yeah, we hardly believe, we, we strongly believe uh, about the uh, correct incentives, I, guess, I would say. Uh, so obviously we respect uh, everybody's privacy. So every individual in the ecosystem you know, decides what they want to share and whatnot. Uh, but if you happen to share, we want you to be rewarded for that. <laughs> so we, that's, that's the way we, uh, we understand people will be, you know, more positive about sharing because they will, will, they will have, a, uh, they will have a, a, you know, a reward for it. So what's going on right now is uh, you see uh, the big data companies like uh, Google, uh, Amazon and others, uh, they're using your information. You have no, uh, no re any reward or revenue from it, right? Uh, and suddenly people say, okay, but you're invading my, my, uh, <laughs> my privacy or whatever. I would say, if you have a cell phone, you are invaded. I mean, if you want to be part of the community, there's trade-offs, right? Um, so 
in our case, uh, again, as uh, we respect everybody's decision, if you want to share, you share. If you don't, uh, okay, okay with that. Uh, if you share, you will be rewarded from, uh, for that. And, uh, and, and what we tend to do is to, orga to organize and use that information to uh, reduce uh, cost and emissions uh, for the whole ecosystem and mainly for people. So I would say that, it's, uh, I mean, this uh, uh, privacy uh, and stuff is, has been, has been a, like a big thing lately. Uh, but the truth is uh, we were already giving up of that a long time ago when we started having smartphones. And, uh, and you have a decision to take, or rather you maintain yourself uh, connected or you simply got uh, not connected, but that means uh, getting out of the, of the world, maybe. No, no. Well, you see it in a very practical world, but there's a lot of layers there. So I, I oh, just, obviously, uh, I, 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 won't, I won't get into, I mean, uh, more, uh, you know, each one of those things might be like another three, two, three hours of discussion. Yeah, it's uh, so I don't want to get deep into that. Uh, but what I say is uh, we need to see uh, how the world was, uh, you know, 50 years ago. How the world is today, oh, yeah. where we can go, right? And, uh, and uh, if you want to see it, uh, that privacy that is so, you know, beloved, uh, was that private <laughs> back in time and what that worth for you so uh, I, I guess that in a certain moment we need to know okay okay are we going to be because in order to have a better society we all need to be better persons right and the exposure uh, tends you to stop doing nonsense i would say <laughs> so people will need, will need to decide whether they continue to do nonsense or they are maybe more exposed and, uh, and by that uh, being uh, taking uh, uh, better decisions, let's say. So if, uh, if you see, uh, you know, uh, in the Bible where uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ comes and, and says, okay, remember the 10, uh, you know, things we gave to Moses? Okay, forget about that. Now it's you know, <laughs> have God over everything and uh, love your uh, uh, beloved, your, your uh, uh, colleagues as much as you love yourself. I would say that if we can manage that, uh, it doesn't matter what your religion is. Uh, if we are able to, you know, understand that the common uh, um, uh, benefit is biggest than uh, the individual benefit, and that if we can uh, treat uh, others as we would like to be treated, um, the privacy thing starts to, you know, have less importance. Obviously, uh, all this access to data and stuff can be used in a very bad way. So I would say that the worries need to be on controlling or making pressure on how people having access to this technology are using it and making that more transparent like what governments and big corporations do with information or uh, how they, uh, you know, uh, treat this information or if they are using it for the correct way. No, no, I'm, I'm completely with you. And I think it's a good point, the sense of responsibility. Of course we have, but, but I think <laughs> just one area that I want to touch because I know that is, um, and we're going to finish in a while, but, um, but let's look at cybersecurity. I, I completely am with you that the sense of responsibility, and you touch a very important thing, the idea of using, uh, especially in the way you build, and that can be seen in your website, in all the documentation, is that a sense of responsibility of the community and the governance because everyone can have access to these dabs and to this data. But of course, there's a big challenge that, let's say one thing is the ideal way of looking at these things and the way I think actually you guys are doing, which is impressive. But then there's the reality. And the reality is the last four years, we had fake news, cyber attacks that have been growing and we have a huge amount of technology issues that unfortunately are powered by the biggest corporation on the planet because they really... They focus on the profit and they forgot the governance and they forgot as well that uh, I'm not talking politics because you are in the US and the US is very divided, but it's more about common sense. In the end of the day, if, if scientific, we know that something can go wrong, like you said, if you can hurt you, why the hell are you doing it? But uh, the point is that this took us almost to a kind of science fiction parallel reality with which a huge part of the population is believing in the most crazy things. And they actually, they've been pushed through social media in the platforms where we have the best scientists in the world, platforms like you, but then you have the most crazy theories of conspiration that millions and millions of people buy it. 
So I just want to touch, how do you see that as well? Because I know that your governance is quite unique. And I want to touch this again, because for you and me that understand these things is quite obvious. But uh, if I speak with the, even people in my close network, if I start talking about the vaccination, trust me, in two people or three people I speak, one or two of them will be talking about theories of conspiration, some of them the most crazy possible ways. But of course, if you go to cybersecurity, it's much more sensitive. Yeah, we, because, we, always, yeah. we always joke in our uh, meetings that uh, the next uh, big startup is the one that will detect fake news and expose them, <laughs> right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes you time, you know, it's, uh, and it's no, a lot. But of I think the way, sorry to interrupt, but I think the way that you guys are doing that touches that. And that's one of the things that I, well, I respect a lot in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, mainly, mainly because what we are uh, uh, working on is to have a very transparent environment of information and where things are very easy to be checked. Uh, and I think that that's the way we need to go. Um, you know, uh, yes. make it very easy to check if something is true or not. Uh, and uh, because at, at the end, uh, you know, all these people, I mean, there's people, I mean, we're in the 20s, you know, we're in the time that we're talking about you know, uh, making population in Mars, right? And there's people in this world, and there's a lot, that still believe that the Earth is plain. Yes. Millions. So, there's I mean, even how, groups. How, cra how crazy that can be. Haven't they been in an airplane? Haven't they looked at the horizon and see the curve <laughs> you know, going down? Uh, but again, but that's why I want to ask, because the, I think special people like us, and I think especially what you're doing, is we have a responsibility as well, because the point right now is that or we create a very dystopic world, <laughs> which partly is happening, or you get in serious trouble. So I think my point, and I, I'm provoking you in the, in the positive way, because I, one of the things that I love what you try to do that is unique is that capacity to look at uh, um, the governance that I think is unique. I think you are one of the few organizations focused in smart cities that touches governance. And I think that, I think probably for you is, is natural. But I think probably the rest of the world is not natural at all. And I think this is quite important to take it much more serious, I think. And, and that's why I want to touch this again, sorry. Yeah, and, uh, and you're right. Uh, and the reason it's tough, it's not because it's tough uh, to do it. It's because it's tough to lose control. People don't like yes. to lose control. Right. Uh, in our case, we put uh, on, on the on the side of people and we make them easy to take the decisions, even if they're wrong. Right. And uh, the only thing that we will do is show them that it was wrong with facts and allow them to decide again. Right. And uh, and I think that because at in a certain point, uh, you know, humanity has been going you know back and forth from the, uh, uh, you know, uh, these elites that think that they are the ones that need to take the decisions because the others are not capable of it. And uh, I, win I think we need to go in the direction of a society that is uh, well-educated and everybody can take the decision. Or at least we get to a consensus in which we're all at least happy or at least for a certain period of time. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, the humanity is not uh, good in, on accepting changes. And now we are in a moment in which we will need to change very fast a lot of times until we find uh, the, the final solution. It's not going to be easy and it's not going, it's not going to be fast. We will miss, you will, we, will then be, we will make mistakes, uh, but it's, it's a process that needs to be taken or we will always be like we are today that I think nobody's happy with. I'm 100% with you and I think it's the key element of our times. That's why I wanted to touch this and I think especially, I suggest for everyone listening to us to read the, your governance and some of the models. <laughs> Because, of course, there's no perfect model, but these governance are really particularly important for what you're talking about and as well for all the challenges that you're facing. So I will touch the last thing So, because um, it's been passing one hour and a half and it's been fantastic. And I think we'll get another one about smart cities. I really want to touch and, that more. Anytime. So, you, know, you know, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. So it's OK. I'm enjoying no, it. No, no, it's great. And these, these things are very important. So. Um, if share is in a phase of accelerated growth, is like you said, you put a lot of seeds and now is getting a great forest. I would say forest because you have so much different wonderful trees. So can you tell us about these goals that you have right now? I know that you even have been talking with people like former governor Schweiznegger. There's a lot of people that know your work and you're working with a former 
uh, astronaut. Just tell us about that, because of course it's Martin, but as well it's great for people to know what you achieve. And I think not everyone knows uh, about you guys. There's, there's a lot of startups that got these billions of dollars and they're not doing anything besides speculation. So I think it's interesting to highlight this work. Yeah, well, you know, uh, when you're coming from, uh, uh, from uh, not a central side of the world, let's say, so we're coming from Argentina, very far away from everywhere, and uh, in Brazil. Uh, and, uh, you know, building the trust that will, uh, you know, make the, everybody, or especially the financial system, believe in us, is going to be the first success and the, the first shit uh, with success. And uh, I, I think we are very close to that. I mean, we're, that's going to happen in the next three months. Um, and it was a long journey, but it, as, as I, we were speaking at the beginning, uh, resiliency is the most, uh, you know, appreciated uh, quality or qualification in an entrepreneur. And we uh, form an organization that is highly resilient. Uh, we always say that we have 12 years of non-revenue and still funded. Uh, so uh, I would say that we are more a miracle than an organization. <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, I'm telling you this because, uh, you know, at the end, uh, what, you, what you want to create is something that, uh, that is able to, to, to work uh, and happen, right? Um, so, uh, going, going to just a, like a more conclusion on the side, um, you know, uh, the creation of this type of systems that we, we've been, uh, creating and, uh, and the, uh, it, it was all happening because of, uh, our ability to collaborate. Uh, humanity needs to understand that competing is something maybe it's good, but competing just for the for the world competing or just to only find out one winner is something that will uh, stop us or prevent us to, from uh, a better society or a better world. Uh, we need to learn more about collaboration. Um, so uh, in, in terms of, uh, of technology, for example, well, you, you talk about uh, the, the astronaut and, and this is uh, Scott Brzezinski, a very uh, kind and nice person. And uh, he's uh, uh, starting to work with us. Uh, I, I met him in the World Economic Forum uh, last year, uh, one of the last trips I was able to do to make that last year. <laughs> and uh, um, and this uh, this is a new. I mean, the technology we're creating uh, sometimes uh, uh, you find problems, and you see that some technology is used for some stuff. You can use it for another. And in this case, uh, we are using the same technology we were creating. We were using for the mobility side and, uh, and, uh, and for the uh, uh, carbon credit side um, for uh, detecting very early and attacking when it's time uh, fires, which is one of the biggest problems uh, in California now and, and, and many places in the world. So Californian cities are one, one of the most polluted uh, cities in the world because of obviously ge geographic conditions, uh, having the mountains in the back and the sea in the front. Uh, but uh, because of fires. I mean, we have an, uh, a lot of CO2 in the air because of fires and, uh, and we are breathing you know, CO2 the whole time and, uh, um, and uh, uh, burn particulates. So Scott is ad adding his vision from the space. For Scott is a former uh, five mission, uh, space mission astronaut. Uh, and uh, in that same company, we incorporated the Western Fire Chief Association as partners. And, uh, and uh, they bring us all the expertise on the fire side. So I would say you need to bring, uh, you know, all the people that can bring a high expertise in every parts of the, or of the solution that you might create. And don't be afraid of sharing. I mean, uh, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense to have 100% of equity of nothing. <laughs> it's better to have, you know, a smaller portion of something that makes sense, that, that really changes uh, realities and uh and i would say that's one of the main recommendations that we can do no oh, it's very inspiring and uh i think congratulations for first for everything that you guys achieved and as well i, I think just uh you mentioned that you've been working based in, in corporations and as well collaboration and as well that there was not big revenues or almost no revenues but you have to see that Amazon didn't have revenues in the first 12 years or 15. And people forget that. And now it's the biggest corporation in the planet or one of the biggest. So I think, I think it's the vision and the capacity to, to persist and build that. So I think, uh, Eduardo, it's been fantastic. I think um, 
I don't know if you just tell people where they can find information, websites. I think I'll, we put all the links, but it's better to come from you. Yeah, well, well get, I would guess, uh, I, I would say, I mean, uh, we, one of the things we, we are working on is updating our websites and stuff. So I would yes, say, I think you need that. Yeah. I, I, if you, if you yeah. really want to get updated on what we're doing, just uh, send us an email and get in touch with our team. We have a complete team of people that will supply information. Um, and, uh, and the other thing is, uh, you know, and this is for uh, entrepreneurs, you know, in the terms of, uh, you know, at the beginning of last year, I started having a relationship with a very big uh, uh, international corporation, uh, which first uh, approach to my uh, uh, proposal was, uh, we are interested, but use, don't use my name. Don't, don't mention you're talking with me. Uh, you're forbidden to. Uh, you need to send me anything that you will put about your project that mentions something related to us. Uh, and uh, uh, after all this hard work uh, during the, the, the year, uh, in December, we sat down in person, finally, uh, to discuss an MOU. And in the MOU, that was, they asked us, uh, what, do, what would you like to, to be in the MOU? And I'm, when, when somebody asks you what you want to, do, to have, you, you put everything, right? Uh, I was surprised with uh, everything included, plus other stuff that I didn't even expect them to accept. So I didn't put it there, they, they put it. So now they're talking about co-branding, uh, social education and partnership, and, uh, uh, and uh, including uh, the world power by, uh, you know, in all the projects. Uh, so uh, if we can uh, have a, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, an experience on that is uh, don't, don't be depressed by the first result, continue to go uh, that when people see that things will, will happen regardless, they will join your boat. I love it. And I think it's very important to, to look at that. So, well, I, I know that you cannot disclose probably that big corporation, but I'm sure it's going to be a big thing for people listening to uh, us. It will, it will happen now. I'm, uh, I'm arriving in Brazil in February, early February. So we're signing that uh, and uh, announcing that and, and getting into the uh, Amazon taxi project together with that corporation uh, and announcing it uh, out and loud. We'll be here to promote it as well. So I think, first of all, congratulations. I know that it's not easy. And I think that resilience and persistence, but as well, building a fantastic project will pay off. And it's paying off already. You are changing an entire uh, state that is, has millions and millions of people, bigger than a lot of countries in Europe. So I think it will have as well its effects and as well changing lives of people. So Edward, thank you so much. It's been a fantastic hour and a half. Um, this, I think it will be the first of a lot because I want to touch much more of these areas. And I wish you all success. And I don't have doubt it will be a huge success going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, anytime, you know that uh, you are appreciated. You're a good friend. So uh, hope to talk to you soon.